Good morning to you. Uh, welcome to Morning News Today Sports. We're joined by the man of the moment, the newly appointed Bafana coach, Gordon Egerson. Gordon, thanks so much for joining us on yeah, Morning thanks. News Today and congratulations from all of us here at the channel. Uh, many people have said that this is the toughest job in the country at the moment, a poison chalice, some are calling it, a noose around your neck, but you're still smiling and laughing. It's a, it's a, great, a great day for you, a great moment to be uh, announced as the national coach. It really is, you know. I feel very proud and honoured, you know. The, the football uh, national team is a national asset, you know, and uh, at the moment we all need to work together to bring it back to its glory days, you know. We've got some great competitions coming up and the World Cup coming up, so it's all very exciting. Well, you've been involved in the local game for, for such a long time and had great success, four PSL titles. Uh, is it a big step up from uh, PSL football to international football with Bafana Bafana? And do, are, you, are you prepared for the challenge? No, I certainly am prepared. I think there's a, obviously a huge difference, you know. The difference is, of course, on a, on a daily basis with your club, you have your players every single day. You know, in the national team, you only get them a week or two <coughs> weeks before. But I'm fine with that. I think, that's, I think it's very important that we, we set up a, a situation where we can visit the players overseas on a regular basis visit the clubs here locally, speak to the players locally, watch them training. You know, I think we need to get ourselves about out there and uh, make sure the players know what they have to do. Your, your track record uh, with clubs like most recently with Morocco Swallows taking them in 18 months from relegation to real contenders for the title stands you in good stead for a national team that's low on confidence, low on performance. Uh, is it going to be difficult to change them around, do you think, to, to, to instill that sense of uh, pride again and, and, and uh, ability to win games? No, first of all, let me say I think uh, we really have good players in our country. We, we really have. And if you think about the situation just before the World Cup, you know, we, we took Spain to extra time, you know. So why have things changed so much? I think the most important thing that players have to realise is that this is the national team. It's not a club team. It's a national team. There's so much at stake. They're playing for the nation. And they've got to be really proud to put on that jersey. They've got to go out there and really fight for their position. And once the players get out of this comfort zone that I think they may have been in the last couple of months, we need to really sort them out in that respect and you know make them feel that they've got to fight for their place in the team, which they have to do. And um, they, I think we're going to be okay. And they certainly will be fighting for a place for their first, your first match in charge against Brazil. Not going to be an easy one. And the fans who are 100% behind you at the moment, a fickle bunch, you're yes. going to be judged on that performance. Are you nervous yet? No, I don't think we're going to be judged on that. You know, I think what's important right now is we've got a vision and we know we, what we have to do. You know, the most important thing for us to do is in the Evan Cup of Nations, we need to do well. We need to get to the final. I think, uh, you know, we need to get there. That's important. And of course, we need to qualify for the World Cup. But those are the two obvious main um, objectives right now. The Brazil game is going to be a great opportunity to, to see where we are, you know, and uh, playing away from home against Brazil. It's a, nice, it's a nice trip. It's a nice game. Sure. A lot of people have been saying about uh, the goal set for you by Safa as being unrealistic, but in your presentation you must have been aware that that's what they were going to expect of you. So you, you must be fully up for the challenge. Exactly. You know, I'm under no illusions of the difficult task that lay ahead. There's, there's really a difficult task, you know, but I believe working together and getting the support of the, of the nation behind us, which I'm overwhelmed at, at the moment because they are supporting the Bafana right now and, uh, you know, we can just get them all behind us and get, a, get the job going, we can do well, you know. And uh, as I say, we do know it's a difficult task, but I certainly wouldn't have taken the job if I knew it was an impossible task. It's certainly not impossible. Well, as expected, the rumour mill's in full swing about who your back staff is gonna, backroom staff is going to be, and names have been bandied about, yes. Lucas Gedebe and uh, Fani Medida and Dr. Kamala. Are you going to be looking to, to surround yourself with people with solid coaching credentials, or are the rumours true? No, look, I'm going to, the rumours aren't true. I, I'm at the moment, I have sat down with the executive. I am going to give them my, the way forward and my, and my recommendations. You know, they have assured me that I'll be able to pick my technical team, but it's got to obviously go through the, the procedure. And you're quite right, I need to surround myself with people that can add value. I think we've got so many good brains in our company. We've got so many good uh, football brains here. And as a head coach, you know, you want to pick these people's brains. You want to get the information that you can. At the end of the day, ultimately, you have to make the final decisions. But I think we've got to use the people around us. And I think all of us together, working together and pulling towards one objective, and that's to do well, we can do it. 48 hours into the job there or thereabouts. Uh, have you had a chance to think about who you want to lead the national squad? Have you thought of a captain? Are you thinking about bringing in major changes to the team? No, look, uh, there certainly will be changes. I think we've got to change the mindset of certain players in the team. As I said before, we've got so much talent in this country. There is so many players that are able to play for the national team and want to play for the national team and will die out there. And that's the type of players we're looking for right now, you know. I mean, it's far too early to start talking about captaincy and too many changes right now. There definitely will be changes. Everybody, we start from a clean slate 
now, and uh, you know, everybody will be given the opportunity if they're performing. You know, I think we need to we need to be fair, we need to be honest, and we need to pl to play the players that are really on top of their game. You know, we can't just put players in because three years ago they played well. They need to be playing now, currently well. Obviously, each coach brings in, and you, you're saying you've given us some sort of idea of what you want to do of, of, of motivating people to play for the national team. Each coach brings in a new set of tactics, and uh, your tactics have, have kind of, you know, so certain people have said you play one way or you play another way. Uh, do you think that you have to adjust what you've done in the PSL with Morocco Swallows and say, well, look, this is a national team. We're playing against international teams like Brazil. We're playing in the AFCON. Do you have to adjust it on a daily basis, or do you have a set kind of idea of where you're heading with the team in terms of their tactics and how you want them to play. I think I think the most important thing is we have to uh, have to have an identity, you know. And um, I believe our philosophy should be to play attacking football, exciting football, corporate football, and play to the strengths of the team. We need to play winning football. We need to get wide. We need to play with width. We need to, you know, these are our strengths. I mean, the, the, you know, we're not a team that wants to play counter-attack football, although sometimes tactically you have to play a certain way against your opposition, depending on the environment, the pitch, and so on and so forth. But overall, we want to play an exciting brand of football because we're capable of doing that, and we have got the players to do that. You know, sometimes, you know, as you just mentioned earlier on, our reputation of doing this or doing that, but I, I play to the strengths of the team and being a national team coach and being a national team you can select the type of players to play the way you want them to play you, you're, not, you're not inheriting players where you say okay this guy's this or that guy's that so you've got to and that's what we want to do we want to play this exciting brand of football carpet football and of course we've got to keep possession of the ball and I think that's most important uh, you were talking earlier on about the fact that we've got great players, that it's a great team that you can put together. Uh, development's obviously key. Two years, maybe not enough time for you to be concentrating on the development of younger players, but how important is that to you as a national coach now to see youngsters being developed and being groomed for the national setup? I think it's hugely important, you know, and I think, uh, you know, we haven't got a, a real proper development at the moment because we're changing too much sometimes. You know, we have the Brazilian style, new coach comes, and then we have that style. We need to have an identity, and our identity needs to be followed through from the ages of 10 right through so on a daily basis these kids are playing a certain way the way the national team is playing when they get to the national team they they, they just fit in like a glove you know but I think we've made too many changes you know we get we have a, a certain coach who's got a philosophy and he wants to play maybe the way his country plays the way he knows then we have a Brazilian coach who wants to play the Brazilian way without wingers full backs and then we start all over again so I mean we have got a vision and uh, there are people in place putting this together you know we've got some we've got some great people in our country you know who, who are really jacked up in these departments Departments. Uh, Steve Compel has got a great vision. These Ted Dimitri has got a great vision. You know, these guys have done so much in the football for the youngsters. But we just need to stick to something rigidly and say, this is what we're going. This is what we're going to do. This is our philosophy. Let's go with this for the next ten years. Not change it after three years or four years. But we have to find that what we're going to go with and stick to it, most importantly. You were saying earlier on, uh, or right at the beginning of the interview, that one of the most important things is, is having the time to go and uh, chat to players playing internationally. Uh, the li you think, obviously, of the likes of Stephen Pinnock, our most successful uh, Bufana Bufana player playing overseas. Uh, what are your plans in the immediate future? Are you heading overseas immediately to go and start chatting to some of those guys? No, the first, my first uh job is to make sure I get my technical team on base. Once we've got that all settled, I think my first priority is to go locally. I want to visit every single team. I want to visit every single coach and I want to speak to the chairmen of the club. You know, regarding the release of the players, build up a relationship. What are their needs? What are our needs? How can we work together? Because this is very, very important. We need to get the players released on a certain time. There's always a situation where it's club versus country. But I believe if you've got a good relationship, we can make things happen. Overseas-based players, we need to visit them on a regular basis. I don't want to only see Stephen Peter or four days before the game. I want to go over there, I want to watch him training, I want to speak to his coach, what is his coach doing about, how he's playing, how is he getting the best out of him, what is his best position, how does he perform, and I want to see this firsthand. I want to sit down with Stephen, take him to lunch, take uh, Morgan Gill to lunch, go see other players. There's another player there, Sermon, who's apparently doing great at the moment. We need to monitor these players. We've got so many players all over the world, we need to have many camps, for example. We need to, we, when, when there's a FIFA weekend and we're not playing for whatever reason, Go over to Europe, get a, a camp, get all these guys together and have a training session for three days, four days, five days, get to know these players. There's so much to be done, you know, in such a short space of time. But right now, our main focus, of course, is the African Cup of Nations and qualifying for the World Cup. Well, thanks so much for joining us. I know it is a, a short time, so your time is precious to you. It's great to have you here on Morning News today, and we wish you the best of luck. We'll be following your progress closely and hopefully uh, have you back to chat about all your successes uh, not too far down the line. Gordon Eggerson, the new Bafana Bafana head coach.